Dun 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 There is something in the water and it is sabotaging your hair care game. What's good everybody? It's your main girl Mel here to deliver quality content about water quality. In today's video, we are going to talk about how hard and soft water negatively affect your hair, but how we can positively save it. I know what you're thinking. Mel, water is supposed to be a curl's best friend, right? Right? Well, not to get into muddy water, but if your hair is really frizzy on the ends, it is completely lacking definition, it is dull, stiff, rough to the touch, difficult to brush, fragile and breaking, Meanwhile, your roots are greasy, slimy, disgusting. They're clumping, they're flaky, and it feels really heavy with buildup. On top of that, your scalp is extremely dry, you're experiencing eczema, you're even experiencing excessive hair fall, all while your hair color also won't stay or completely discolors, your shampoo doesn't lather, your conditioner does nothing, and you just can't figure it out. Well, it could be because water hardness is really confusing to understand and most people just completely overlook it until today's video. So keep watching to find out how hard and soft water, even pool and sea water, impact our hair health, our texture, hair color, and even the way our products work. We're going to cover all the nitty gritty scientific that you need to know about water and of course how to solve your problems. Because that's what we're here for, right? So without further ado, let's dive in. Now let's clear water things up and just dip our toes into why you need this video. Water quality directly affects our hair and skin health as well as the function of our products. So to develop solutions, we need to discover and dissect the problem. And to explain, we have a very special Smarticle Particle here to help. Hi, I'm Scientific Mel, and I'm going to share all the information that you need to know about H2O. I'm just going to take a look at my notes, which are very hard to read. <clears throat> Much better. So we have soft and hard water. Soft water is water with a low mineral content. Naturally, rainwater is considered soft as it falls. However, as water continues to make its way through the ground and into our waterways, for example, tap water, well water, river water, sea water, spring water, along the way it picks up lime, chalk, and mostly calcium and magnesium. And this is what makes the water hard. Now, there are a lot of different minerals and they all cause different problems. You may want to write this down. <laughs> Water with high amounts of calcium and magnesium make blonde hair grassy. So if you've ever wondered why your toner only lasts one wash, now you know. Go ahead, punch the air. But wait, because there's more, and arguably worse. Has your hair ever gotten that green tinge to it? Swimmers definitely know the struggle. And most people, especially blondes, associate that green tinge from swimming in a chlorinated pool, and they blame the chlorine. However, green-tinged hair is caused by the hair's reaction to copper. And even if you're not a swimmer, this can occur at home too. Copper can be found in your water supplies, especially if your pipes are made out of copper. And besides making your hair look weird, it gets worse. Now, wait just a minute. Before we get too deep, I mean, we've already scared the kids. How do we really know if we have hard or soft water? Well, approximately 85% of people in the United States are living with hard water. So there's a good chance that you're living with it, but especially if you're in any of these states. Now there are some other fun and cool ways to really find out if you have hard water. You can easily just call up your water center and ask them, what kind of water do we have? or test it at home. This is a special device called a TDS meter. If you have a pool or aquarium, you may already have one. This will measure how many dissolved solids are in your water. The higher the number, the harder the water. You can also do a quick little DIY trick. Disclaimer, this is just a fun little experiment. It's not very accurate, but if you take a clear water bottle, fill it up about halfway with water, add a couple drops of soap and shake it all up, 
Depending on how many bubbles you see, the more bubbles, the softer the water. The less bubbles and the cloudier the water, the harder. Or the easiest way to find out is by opening your eyes and observing. Your answer may be right in front of you. Look at your faucet, your shower head, your shower doors, and your tubs. And look out for white scale. Hard water at home tends to cause a buildup on these surfaces. And you will see that white filmy layer. Those mineral deposits can also be found on your dishes and glassware. And they even cause clothes to become stiff and faded after washing. Now of course, all of these same things are happening to your hairs and scalps. In addition to these minerals creating buildup on your hair, skin, and everywhere else, they're also preventing your products from working properly. On the other hand, soft water makes soaps work really well, really well. Because soft water is void of these minerals, it will lather soaps much easier and much quicker. You can use a little bit of shampoo and get a whole lot of suns. Soft water alone can have cleansing abilities and it can make the hair feel much squeakier, which isn't the worst problem to have because it is cleansing, but it can be a little bit too stripping. It can still leave your hairs feeling very dry and your skin feeling thirsty. If it is not properly treated, that is. And most importantly, if not properly treated, over time, your hair will become damaged. How, you ask? Well, as we know, hair becomes damaged when the balance is off. Especially the F balance. That's pH for short. Now take a look at this chart. This is the F chart. And look, regular water is a neutral level seven. But look where hard water is. 8.5 or higher. You see, what's happening is these minerals change the F of the water. So hard water, which is rich in calcium and magnesium, is usually more alkaline than soft water. Now look again at the chart. Do you see where hair and skin is? Our hairs and skin need a good F. pH balance is important to retain moisture, prevent breakage, give you stronger hair with better elasticity, and it also promotes a healthy biome so that no fungus and bacteria will grow in your hair. Now, not to get too scientific, but alkaline pH found in hard water increases the negative electrical charge of the hair strands, and this will increase friction between the fibers. In other words, it will make your hair rough to touch. Now, this will lead to cuticle damage. Cuticle damage will increase the porosity of your hair as it will create more holes, and it will also weaken your strands and can eventually lead to breakage. Again, on the other hand, soft water tends to be more acidic. Before you think that's better, keep in mind that too much of anything is no good. And really acidic water that is below the pH of a level six can leach metals like lead and copper from your pipes. That's green and brassy hair from soft water. And that's because acidity will corrode at things over time, which can also happen to your hair. And so bottom line, you can try to stay in the shallow end, but either way, soft or hard water, you're in the deep end. Did you get all that? If you need me, I'll just... Okay, thank you for the scientific, but let's get specific on how we can fix these problems. We're gonna cannonball jump right into products because product choices are very, very important here. If you are one of the 85% of people that are living with hard water, and or if you are a swimmer, you must, must, absolutely no question, you must be using a chelating shampoo. It will change your life. What is this smell? More products! What the heck? <sighs> Hear me out. A chelating shampoo is like a clarifying shampoo, but stronger. If we take a look at shampoos and the levels of cleansing that they provide, we have co-wash, shampoo, clarifying, and then chelating. A chelating shampoo takes clarifying to the next level with very special ingredients that actually help to remove that mineral buildup. 
These ingredients are called EDTAs and you need them to restore and cleanse your hair from mineral buildup. Now right here, I'm gonna provide you with the list. Screenshot this. These are the type of ingredients that you wanna see in your cleansers to remove that buildup. After using these types of cleansers, you will see tremendous improvements in your hair because chelation will help to neutralize your hair and your scalp and restore it to its natural pH. This will not only improve your hair health, but it will also improve your skin barrier on your scalp, making it healthier, which can help to reduce oil production, which will also help you wash less frequently. But also just to note, some other things you may wanna look for on the bottle of your products is one that specifically says that it will help to remove chlorine, remove hard water, that is gentle, especially for curly hair. If you can find something that is creamy and has good slip. If your hair is colored, check if it is color safe. Make sure it has those EDTA ingredients and try to find a shampoo that is sulfate free. I know, I know, dare I say it. As many of you know, I don't discriminate against sulfates. I have nothing against them. I don't think that they are terrible. However, however, if you do have hard water, sulfates are something you'll want to avoid because they can compound with the minerals in the hard water and they will create this film over your hair that is very hard to wash off, which often leads it to be left on the skin and that will lead to irritation. So, I mean, the good thing is you really don't need sulfates to get a good cleanse, especially if you have soft water. Sulfates are very good cleansers and that's why you don't really need them in soft water which is already pretty cleansing because it can lead to even more stripping and even more dryness if you're not conditioning properly afterwards. So I'm gonna share some of my product suggestions and recommendations that you guys can use that are great EDTA chelating ingredient shampoos. One of my all time favorite clarifying chelating shampoos from a stellar brand is the Malibu C Undo Goo pH 9 shampoo. I've talked about this shampoo a ton of times on my channel. I love it for clarifying. Personally, I use it probably once a month because I don't have crazy hard water, but I'll just listen to my hair and if I feel like I really need something cleansing, that's the shampoo that I go for. And because of its pH, I would recommend it for people with low porosity hair that can be very dry because it can help to swell your cuticle to make it more accepting of the conditioners you apply afterwards. This is a high pH shampoo, so it will kind of lift your cuticle a little bit, but in a good way. It helps to cleanse everything, and it's not something you need all the time. As for some other options, Malibu C also has a swimmer's wellness shampoo. They have a hard water wellness shampoo. These are both great shampoos, or they also have these little packets of crystals that are really affordable, and you use it as a treatment every so often to cleanse your hair completely. And another option that is a little bit more affordable that I would suggest is from the brand Ion. They have a really good chelating shampoo for swimmers and or hard water. As for conditioning afterwards, some of those shampoos that I mentioned also have a matching conditioner, but I recommend applying a deep conditioner or mask that will meet your hair's needs. A conditioner for high porosity hair should have some proteins in it to strengthen, and low porosity should just be very, very moisturizing. And pro tip, when you're done conditioning, rinse it out of your hair with filtered or distilled water. So if you want, check these ones out. I'll link them below for you guys. But as long as you're looking for products that do contain those ingredients that I shared with you, you will definitely see improvements of your hair. Now, will you have to use a chelating shampoo every time you wash your hair? And what should you avoid? One, no, you probably don't have to use a chelating shampoo every single wash unless your water is really that hard. But in the case where you need to refresh and rehydrate your hair, but not actually have to wash it, I recommend using distilled water in a water bottle, or you can pour filtered water over your hair and scalp, so this way you can wet it without distressing it. If you have soft water, you may be able to avoid shampooing, since the water itself can be cleansing. Depending on your hair type and your scalp needs, you may be able to get away with a conditioner only wash, or just using a very gentle moisturizing shampoo or co-wash every other wash. This way you can prevent stripping. I can also recommend this co-wash from Cantu. If you haven't seen my last video, I reviewed a bunch of different Cantu products. This is a co-wash, but it has some EDTA ingredients and I actually found it cleansed pretty well. However, if you are a swimmer and you're asking me if you need to wash your hair every time, if it is necessary, 
I would advise it's better not to let chlorine chill in your hair. Even if you're swimming in a saltwater pool, and even though it is a lot more gentle to the hairs and skins, both salt and chlorinated water can still discolor your hair and leave it feeling very dry. After all, they both have chlorine in them, and chlorine is a bleach. So make sure you give your hair a thorough rinse after swimming, and immediately condition. And you should regularly use a chelating shampoo with those EDTA ingredients. And or, <clears throat> please wear a swim cap. Don't worry, no one's judging you. You still look cute, and your hair is gonna look even cuter. So, try to do that. Making these product and routine changes will definitely improve your hair, but if you find it's not doing enough for you and you are seriously concerned about your water quality, some other options you can consider is installing a filter in your shower head. There's a lot of different shower heads that you can look into that are designed to help filter out those minerals like copper, zinc, magnesium, and calcium that are found in hard water and thus prevent it from damaging your hair and skin. You probably only need this if you have really hard water, but then at that point, you might want to consider even getting an overall water softener for your house if that is an option for you. This way, the whole house benefits, your pipes don't get built up, and then you have better water pressure. And it can be a lot, but if you gotta do it, you gotta do what you gotta do. But anyways, I hope this has clear watered some things up for you guys. I will put those important product links that I recommend and suggest in the description box below, as well as I will link any other videos you might need to see, like high growth fatigue and deep conditioning. And stay tuned because soon I will be sharing a video on summer hair care by the pool and by the beach so you can really protect your hair from the sun. You know, just, just another thing to worry about but that I can save you from. This has been your main girl Mel. This has been a lot of talking and now I am out. Stay hydrated everybody, but don't be so hard water on yourself. Amanda! How does your hair feel? So good. It feels very light. Looks beautiful. I love when my hair feels light. Yeah. Thanks for the recommendation. So we have hard and soft. Strong and weak. I can see clearly now the sand has gone. Fuck. Cleaning this and this drastically improves water pressure if you're struggling with water pressure. But if it's low even after you clean these, it's probably a situation with the pipes. The pipes have already gone a little. They need a little. She should probably look into that.